welcome everyone to Cisco Canada's virtual kitchen show. <sighs> Number five we have today. Brings our first show together. So welcome back, Chef Elizabeth from Thanks. Western Foods. Really happy to be here to share the donut love with everyone today. I know it's donut love day, right? Like so who cool. Who doesn't love donuts? Who doesn't love donuts? I got donut music. I love it. I got donut music. So yeah. perfect. What are we doing today? I didn't know Weston had the donut world under under control as well. But this is pretty cool. Uh, Weston is one of the largest manufacturers of donuts in North America. Um, we have uh, three donut plants um, where we fry donuts. And I'm going to show you today just how versatile they are. Uh, we like to say that donuts are a canvas for your creativity. Um, and of course, everyone loves donuts um, as uh, that, you know, ice sprinkled uh, treat, that favorite of childhood. But there's so much more that you can do with donuts. So I'm going to hopefully broaden your donut horizons today. And we're going to explore um, savory applications and some different kind of platforms that you can incorporate donuts into that are super cost effective, extremely portable, and are going to help operators with their margins. So all important things that uh, operators need to know right now. So, so uh, Elizabeth, one thing. There's two of my favorite donuts you have sitting right there. Ooh, should I guess? So Which yes. Can you guess? Yes. Take a guess. Go for it. Okay. I'm gonna say apple fritter. Damn it. That's like number one. one. And yeah. maybe the cruller. Oh. Did I get it? Yes. How did you know? <laughs> I can read your mind now, Jay. We've already done too many of these together. I was gonna say after five shows together, two months. <laughs> I'm channeling Jay now. Um, there go. those are two of our very popular varieties. Um, so I'll actually do give you a little bit of background on donuts. Um, there are two main types of donuts. We have uh, yeast raised donuts that similar to bread have contained yeast and they are allowed to proof and raise. Um, and they're a little bit softer and more pillowy in texture. And so we, in our yeast raised donuts, we have a, a, quite a few varieties listed at Cisco. We've got, of course, the uh, yeast ring, which is our most popular donut most used. The apple fritter is actually also a yeast raised donut. I'll get into a little bit more about that later. And then we also have um, a bar donut. They don't have any yeast here today, but it is a yeast donut that is, you typically see it made into an eclair. And that's yeah. called a bar or a long john. So those are yeast raised donuts. And um, as I said, the, the donuts are made by sheeting out the dough and then cutting out the shapes. And then they're put on to proofing boards. They're allowed to proof before they go in the fryer. Um, and then there's cake donuts, uh, which you might know commonly uh, with this uh, cake ring uh, or the uh, little cake bowl which is cute. Um, and those are made similar to a cake with a batter that has um, what we call chemical leavening, which is baking soda and baking powder in it. So that's what causes them to rise. So they have more of that texture, a little bit denser texture, still very moist, uh, but not as fluffy and light as the yeast raised donuts. So those are uh, made by injecting the batter directly into the oil. So it's actually a faster process to make the cake um, cake donuts. Um, and then we have a donut that's your favorite, the cruller, which is neither a cake donut or a yeast donut, um, it, but it's made more like a cake donut with a batter that's uh, made with a dye that is um, put directly into the oil. So if you've never been to a donut plant, it smells really delicious. <laughs> and, uh, there's a lot of donuts frying, but uh, you know, it's, a, it's one of those indulgent treats that we think about that you know, in this time um, brings us comfort for sure. And who doesn't need comfort right now and a nostalgia. Uh, there's that nostalgia factor from childhood as well, but they're so versatile. And I'm gonna get into showing you um, just how unique you can make them so that um, an operator could take a donut and use it for many different applications uh, across their menus and really get something out of, uh, get more bang for your buck, so to speak. Um, so we're going to start off with our apple fritter, which is 
Shav, before we get yeah. started, can we just say to everyone that's viewing us today on LinkedIn or Facebook or YouTube, to ask us, send us questions. Chef loves questions, especially about donuts. I, I love interacting with uh, with people as we're Yeah, and tell us where you're from. I, I, we, I'm in a room, I'm in a room talking to, to myself essentially. <laughs> I know everyone's there, but <laughs> uh, I'm kind of in a room talking to myself otherwise. Let us so, know where you're watching us from because from I'm gonna say this wrong and I apologize. Dohar Qatar is watching us today. Oh really? In, in Qatar, yes. So welcome. Welcome. So, it's nice time for you. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so I, I just cut in half our apple fritter. So you can see in the center here. Maybe I'll use this camera. Oh, the other camera? Yeah, I'll use this camera. You can see it maybe a little bit better. So you can see the cinnamon swirls all throughout this dough. And there's chunks of real Granny Smith apples, so we don't oh, we don't skimp on this. So I baked these donuts. The donuts are actually maybe I should give you a little uh uh, how to donuts. So donuts are very easy to use. Um, we have what we call pre-fried donuts. So sort of like par-baked bread, all the hard work is done for you. You're just finishing them. So you don't need to worry about the labor, extra labor and proofing. You don't need to have a fryer. Um, all the messy work, the hard work is done. So you would get them in a case frozen, and then you would remove the quantity that you need from a case, um, tray them up, on a sheet tray lined with parchment and let them thaw for about 30 minutes at room temperature. So it's a really quick process. And then we bake for three minutes at 375. So really, really easy to use. Um, so I've got our apple fritter, which I'm gonna make into a sandwich. So um, pork is best friends with apples. So I'm going to do a pulled pork sort of a take on a, a pulled pork sandwich that you get at a barbecue restaurant, but just done on a donut. So I've opened it up, cut it really carefully. You just have to um, use a serrated knife when you're cutting a donut open and just go really, really slowly and don't press down because you don't want the donut to compact. It's really light and fluffy and you want to keep that texture. So you want to make the serration of the knife actually do the hard work for you and just go carefully and slowly. So got my donut gonna put it just to give it a little bit more toasting on the inside um, then I've got some full pork I've got um, some cheddar some aged white cheddar which is going to contrast nicely with the apples um, and the barbecue sauce that I'm using is a little bit sweeter so the, the donut itself isn't too sweet yes it has the apple and cinnamon but it's pretty savory if anybody's never tried a donut without icing on it it tastes completely differently when it's covered in sugar. <laughs> so you can, uh, you know, lend itself to the, the, sorry, the yeast donuts especially lend themselves to savory applications because they're actually a pretty neutral base. So we're just playing up the flavors that are already in the donut um, and with the components that we're putting on top. So I've got some pulled pork, I've got some spinach and arugula mix, some aged white cheddar, and I'm going to put some uh, fresh green apple as well, just for a little bit of uh, a little bit of crunch and that sort of freshness to bring out the apple. So I'm just going to slice that. There we go. I'm going to break it up. So I'm just going to toast this donut just a little bit. So it's already been baked, right? As I described, and then we're going to. Um, assemble our sandwich. So you can definitely add like a barbecue sauce or something like that. I have that a little bit of barbecue sauce in my pork um, just to bring out those flavors and make it really craveable. See, one, one great way to incorporate donuts is to add, um, to use flavors and combinations that people kind of expect, but to make the donut the twist um, so that it's not so polarizing for maybe people who are like, oh, I don't know if I could do that but then you make it a craveable item because they recognize other things uh, in it. So you could, you could do a fried chicken sandwich, of course, um, mm. with, with a donut, maybe even using like the cooler, uh, or I'm gonna make a breakfast sandwich a little bit later uh, with another donut. And so I've got the cheese on my pulled pork, yummy, yummy. And you could press this as well. I'm not going to today, but you could also use it in a mean press and get it crispy and toasty on the outside. So we've got our 
spinach and arugula blend. And here we go. And we've got a yummy pulled pork sandwich on, on this camera here, um, on our apple fritter. Man, that's cool, Chef. So something a little bit different and unexpected, but this could be a really interesting kind of brunch dish. Or again, if you're using the apple fritter for something else, maybe you have a cafe um, and you're actually going to you know, make the apple fritters with the glaze, um, but then you could use it in a sandwich apple as well. So cool. Then I'm going to make an ice cream sandwich. Um, <laughs> so another type of sandwich, of course, um, something for a dessert. So again, I'm going to cut really carefully, not pressing too hard on the donut, letting the knife do the work. And that last a little bit. This one I'm not going to heat up because I don't want my ice cream to melt too much. I'm going to grab that. And I'm gonna get some apples. So I have an apple compote. So you could make that yourself. I cheated a little bit and um, it's actually <laughs> an apple pie filling. Oh, you know what I forgot to do, Jay? Uh, what? I forgot to sugar this one. I was gonna season it. Okay, pretend I tossed it in sugar. Okay. <laughs> I forgot to do that. Um, actually here, let me grab some sugar. Now, to make Kathy, the sugar Kathy Moore says it looks very tasty. Thanks, Kathy. Oh, <laughs> love it. Well, I hope everybody's done being tasty. So I just tossed a little bit of sugar on it. And we are going to add our apple compote to the bottom. Like I said, you can make this from scratch if you would like. What's your favorite donut, Chef? Uh, I really like the apple fritter as well. Mm. I like tossing it in a pumpkin spice sugar. Um, and I'm going to show you that next uh, with another product. But um, I really like the apple fritter and um, the chocolate cake ring just with plain glaze is probably my other favorite. There is. Mm -hmm. I like it's amazing it. how people have like their own, their favorite donut. Of course. Well, we have our favorite everything else, right? True. <laughs> so I'm just going to scoop a little bit of ice cream on top. Just make some sort of nice canals, Jay. <laughs> I see with our plating, you could just, of course, get your scoop going there. I remember back in the day when we had to like canal everything. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. That Sally. And then I'm going to add some bacon. No. bacon. You're putting bacon on that? Putting bacon on it. Just, you know, <laughs> apple and bacon, smoky things, sweet things, savory things go well together. And then I'm going to use um, some caramel sauce. There we go. I don't think that's enough. No, well, I made some um, maple spice pecan. <laughs> I'm going to add that on top too. <laughs> so I just candied some pecans with uh, maple syrup and some chili and smoked paprika. So they're a little bit smoky, sweet, and mapley. And then I'm going to add my. Actually, maybe I'll put this a little bit. If I had some whipped cream, I could put that on the top too. But you can make any donut into a sundae and any kind of flavor combination. I'm going to put a little bit more caramel on the top because, you know, it tastes good. So here we go. I'll show you the camera um, what that looks like. Oh. You can see, looks pretty good. I'd eat that. And it's yeah. a dessert you can eat with a knife and a fork. Or um, if you want to try to pick it up and eat it, um, you definitely can. Like a sandwich. So that is something sweet and something savory out of the same apple fritter. I'm going to grab my next. You know, you, when we talk about takeout and stuff like that for this fall, what a great thing to maybe throw into 
maybe the one not with ice cream, but it might be cold enough. You can do it this winter, but definitely great for takeout on some surprise ideas, right? Absolutely. That you can throw in the takeout meal. Jay, because um, our next product is the uh, bowls. So I have two different types of bowls. I have the cake holes. So these are what we call plain, but they're like a vanilla nutmeg flavor. And then I also have just a plain vanilla. These are a gem, so it's like a mini mini donut. Shut I'm up. I'm just gonna put those in the oven because those to make awesome. the sugar stick, you need to uh, activate um, the donut. So I haven't baked these yet, but I'm gonna put them in just for a few minutes. So just um, bring those oils to the surface mm -hmm. so that the sugar will adhere. In the meantime, we're gonna make our sugar. So we've got our, I'm going to make pumpkin spice because tis the season. But the, the thing with donut sugars is um, it's it's so versatile and easy. You can take anything you have in back of house, any spice, any um, even, even like savory things and combine it to make a donut sugar. So you might have, I'm going to cover up the brand, but you might have some beverage crystals. These are orange flavored beverage crystals. And by mixing beverage crystals, so it could be anything from like a coffee beverage. So like think French vanilla, instant coffee um, mix, or um, lemonade crystals, anything like that, espresso powder. Um, you just change the ratio of sugar to, um, to seasoning. So the general guideline is between seven and nine parts sugar to one part seasoning. So you wanna go something a little heavier, like usually I do cinnamon sugar about eight mm -hmm. parts. So cinnamon sugar, pumpkin spice, I've measured out here, eight parts of sugar, I'm gonna put that in, and one part of, of seasoning. And I'm gonna mix that up just so it becomes. Oops, so everyone's happening. everyone's looking at the Kool-Aid container there. So good luck Heidi, that. Oh, sorry, <laughs> no. beverage crystals, not that. No. Whatever it is, I'm, I'm, we're not we're not uh, <laughs> mentioning any other brands today. But you know, beverage get any flavor. But then you can do like different fruit flavors, right? You think about what you can get. So that's when you mix beverage crystals. It's actually two parts, um, two parts beverage crystal to one part sugar. So there's different ratios. I have a hack sheet that I'm I'm going to send to you guys afterwards, and I know that it's on the Cisco um, SharePoint so that all the customers can access that of our little hacks and tricks. So I'm going to grab that. Great you know, idea, though. Great idea, Chef. Okay. So I'm going to take about a dozen. So they're just, they're just warm and hot. Now you can heat up donuts in a variety of ways. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 15, 12. Uh, in a variety of ways, Jay, um, you can heat them up in a fryer, about 20 mm. seconds. You can mm. heat them up in an oven. So if you don't have an oven on the line, there's a couple different things you could use. You could even use a high efficiency oven, like a Turbo Chef or a Mary Chef really? as well. Yeah. Um, and you can even do them from frozen. So you can um, use the Turbo Chef for uh, eight, don eight mini donuts. Uh, donut holes for about 40 seconds in a high efficiency oven. There's different settings. Again, yeah. contact me if you want to know what the settings are for like how much microwave, how much convection, but um, it's really simple and easy. So um, this is what we call brown bag donuts because you can literally put them in a brown bag. No way. With sugar, and the guests could even choose what kind of sugar they want. So imagine I haven't done this already, but you can put your, your donuts in the brown bag. Yep. You can add your sugar. Where's my plain sugar? Here we go. Add some plain sugar. No. A tablespoon, and you just shake it up. So this could be like a really easy appetizer. And a brown bag, six donuts, about two tablespoons of sugar, and an ounce of a dipping sauce is going to cost you about a buck 25 and you wow. can sell that for 3.99 4.99 5.99 take it to go 
have a little one ounce portion cup of caramel sauce, chocolate sauce, strawberry sauce, whatever, like, you know, you could get from, of course, from Cisco. And here you go out the drive through window, keep the kids happy um, on the way home from picking up dinner. And, um, you know, it's the perfect treat. And you got hot donuts, hot and fresh donuts. Well, you, you, here's the thing, Chef, I love about it is that I'm always thinking about little things that we want to say thank you to our, our guests in our restaurant, right? Or for takeout. Like, do you imagine if you got your order from your third-party delivery? I won't, say, I won't say Uber Eats or Skip the Dishes. Um, but uh, if you got your meal, yeah, and inside you had a brown bag and it just has handwritten on there, thank you, which I have seen, mm -hmm. and it's got hot donuts in there. Um, what a great way just to say thank you to uh, your guests and very, love very, it. Very, very happy and, guests. Yeah, and then, you know what? And then you can even put on there something about, you know, follow us on social. And people will almost return the favor when you give them something like that. And I think that's so important. Absolutely. We love have it. Visit, right? And it's, so it's very little cost for the operator. Yeah. And it's, other than the donuts, you probably have a bag already, right? A right size yeah. bag. For takeout in, in house already you've got sugar you have some sort of spice or seasoning you can mix with it whether it's cinnamon cardamom pumpkin spice it can change with the seasons espresso right yeah and change your dipping sauce so this is pumpkin well, even, spice. Just, even in a, in a, oh sorry go ahead chef i was just gonna say um sorry go ahead jeff and then i talk oh. all right I'll, I'll finish the uh the menu item so i've got a two dips um which you could, of course, put in, in like one ounce little to-go cups. Um, but here, this is plated for in the restaurant. So I've got uh, buttercream cream cheese frosting, which you can just get out of a pail, pail right? or make yourself. And then I've got a caramel sauce, which you can also get out of a pail. Um, so you can make your own or you can just take that. So really okay, simple idea. Like Oops. Yeah, I'll go and show you that. A really simple idea. It's a fun plating here, like with a fry basket, but you could easily go in a to-go box and you can separate them, the divided to-go boxes with, so like your dipping sauce on one side and your hot donuts on the other. You know, there was a restaurant in Lethbridge about 10 years ago when I used to do shows down in Lethbridge, Alberta, and there was a restaurant that had hot donuts with a caramel dip. And yeah. I tell you, that's what everyone talked about in that city was, did you go try this place and have these donuts? And it was incredible how many people would go and just go for that. Yeah. But I, I, I like the idea also is that when someone's having a coffee yes. and uh, they order coffee in your restaurant, and maybe this is a great way to up your coffee price a little bit, is they just get a, two free uh, donut balls mm -hmm. uh, with their coffee. It's just a great way. Like a lot of people dip and dunk and all these things, and we're making drinks so sweet. What a great thing to um, to have with it, and just a great way to say thank you as well. Not that I'm trying to give away free food, yeah. but uh, yeah, you just spread a few like three donuts, put it with a coffee. There you go. Yeah, Little and thing. then and then your coffee at three dollars a cup doesn't seem like three dollars a cup now, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so next, I'm going to make a poutine, what we call poutine. So this is not with French fries. But you, better say that right. you better say poutine right, Chef. <laughs> so our donut poutine is a really adaptable format. Again, very craveable. You can change up the, the flavors that go in it. I'm going to make s'mores today. So I've taken our little gems and tossed them just in sugar. So I'm going to put them in a little cast iron skillet here. But of course, it could go easily in a to-go container. And then to that, I'm going to add... Marshmallows here, I put them in a bag. Now they're not coming open. Um, so then you take some mini marshmallows. They're all stuck together. It's a little humid here today. Um, put that and mini marshmallows, some chocolate. You could do chocolate chips or here's little pieces of chocolate. And actually I'll add the graham crackers when I come back. I'm just gonna put this in the oven for two minutes. Cool. I love it. To let our marshmallows get all bubbly and delicious while we clean up here and get ready for the next. Hey, day. Gail likes her idea with the coffee and donut holes. Thanks, Gail. Oh, yeah. 
That's awesome. There we go. Well, what, what would you put? What would you put, Jay, with with these? What what flavor would you make with the poutine? Oh man. What would inspire you? I know. Good question. What um, about what about a a banana split? So you take mm -hmm. some hydrated banana chips. You take strawberry sauce. Take some chocolate. You take a bit of maybe caramelized pineapple sauce, and you put that with whipped cream. Whether or See, not I there's never cream. a banana. I was never a banana split fan. Oh, Everyone really? else was, oh. but me. I just wasn't a banana split fan guy. You could also do like what I call uh, like movie concession. So pretty much everything you get at a movie concession. Think about like M and M's, uh, pretzel pieces of pretzel. Uh, oh, I got an idea. Sorry, you gave me an idea. Water cups, and then a little bit of chocolate sauce. So it's everything you and popcorn. Sorry, I forgot the popcorn. But that's sort of mm. everything you get um, in movies, right? That's a that's a really fun combo. I would maybe do because they're so beautifully round. Is what are these? Um, what are they called? Oh, elephant ears, or they're called. Uh, uh, what's the case called? That you have at a fair. Beaver tails. Yeah, kind of. Well, for our U.S. folks, uh, <laughs> what's what's the other name for it? I want to. Uh, that's the one. I, that's the only one I know. <laughs> but you pour the batter into the deep fryer, and you go back and forth, so it's all like squiggly lines, and it's all together. Oh, well, what's the name of it? Someone will someone will text us through our comments probably, oh, but I would put that, and then you put your donuts on top. And then I'd cover okay. it with stuff because they're so round, and I, I always like the composition between round and squiggly. Um, okay. Right, that's what I would do. Cool, I like that. So I finished our dessert here. I took out the. Um, I took yeah, we out. Lo we lost camera too, lost so. Camera. I know. I don't know what happened. That's okay. Um, we lost. Um, sorry, we've got here a. Um, the, the, you see, the marshmallows are puffed up and a little bit golden. The chocolate's melted, so we've just got that and a fun platter in a skillet. Reminds you of summertime, even when it's not summer. Um, for guests like kids would love that. And it just, again, it's things you probably already have in house besides the donuts. It's a, you could make it strawberry shortcake, strawberries, ooh, ooh. Uh, other fruit? kinds of fruit, like a cobbler, you could put granola on top like a crumble. So there there's limitless things you can do with this poutine. I've even made nachos before with no. um, chili. Yeah, with chili. So I used actually our yeast um, poles. Mm -hmm. I took the uh, like like a chili, con carne kind of uh, mix. So like mm -hmm. the tomatoes and ground beef and everything. It's tomato sauce. And then I put, um, what did I do? Oh, and then I put cheese, like jalapenos, sour cream, and oh, some salsa. Yep. And it was really good. I was say, <laughs> I was I was and I crumbled corn chips on top as well, so it had that little textural crunch. That was the healthy version? Well, it had meat <laughs> in it, you know, healthy tomatoes. Uh, you know what? That was funnel cake. Thanks, Christine and Neil, for reminding me about funnel cakes. That's what I was thinking about. Funnel cakes. And round donut holes on top. Okay, so and round then, donut holes. Why well, not? you could put it in a bowl. You could put it kind of in a bowl, right? And then it's going to sit in there, and that'd be kind of... You could wrap them. Wrap them? You could wrap donuts with a with a funnel cake if you made it very thin. Huh. Wow, that would be a lot of fried stuff, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be a lot of fried fun, yeah. Well, <laughs> hey, I'm in Alberta. We have, we have the stampede out here. We fry anything. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> right. <laughs> Fried donuts are definitely a treat and things that people enjoy. So it's just, it's just again, an opportunity for operators to really get creative, have fun, um, think they about gotta, ways to delight their, their customers um, and kind of just use this in a, you know, yes, there's different cost effective ways, um, but then there's also some, some practical ways and, and, you know, double up and make it a sandwich carrier um, or use it in, in different ways across your menu. So we're going to get I, um, I, breakfast I, now. I, I have many memories of a past of this industry. And one of them is when my dad would take me to this bakery we delivered groceries to. Okay. And, uh, and he always got a little bag of hot donuts. And it's that hot donut with the brown, with the, with the sugar. 
cinnamon sugar and everything in that bag, like you said, oh my God, brings so many memories back. Absolutely. So good. So good. And but I believe donuts, but you got to finish them off in the fryer. I believe every donut. Yeah. Yeah. Gives yeah. It, don't wait till it gets home. Yeah, you already got two legs. Everything in their heat reasonably well. I love it. All right. I love it. I love. I just think it's so important. It's almost like you've committed to eating something that's probably not the best for you all the time. So why don't you just make it that extra tastier, right? It's great. It's a treat, and it's what we call a permanent indulgence, right? Like people want to reward themselves. They want to feel good. And um, there's nothing wrong with that. But the funny thing is, I think donuts sometimes, I'm not going to eat up on the muffin, but the muffin sometimes has more calories than the donut, right? Absolutely. And that's what people don't, don't quite realize is that muffins um, are cake, essentially. Hey, and Chef Schultz that. says delicious. Hey, Chef. <laughs> Miss you, buddy. Um. <laughs> So I'm just going to heat up. I'm going to fry some eggs, fry some bacon, Jay. Oh. Because um, it's breakfast time. So our American compatriots love eating donuts. Oh, dear. I just lost one of my. <laughs> I, was, I was like, there are computer chips going to go up. Down. There. <laughs> just lost a donut there. But anyway, that's okay. Awesome. I'm going to be having my pulled pork sandwich. There you go. That was the first time. <laughs> I fell so precariously, so I was kind of messed for it. I thought someone was grabbing it, but it yeah. went down. It went down. Um, so I've got some bacon and some hash browns and a fried egg on the griddle right now. I'm just going to put a bowl on to keep that heating up. Sally is just, um, you can't see <laughs> Sally, but she's my fabulous assistant who is helping me with donuts because we're actually going to make some dipped donuts because I know. Everybody would want to dip donuts. Um, and we're gonna get into our yeast ring. So I baked these before. So when you actually are dipping donuts with a uh, glaze, you don't want to do it hot. So you need to let them, you need to cook them, right? To, to bring back the, uh, the oil and give them a little bit of stability. But then you need to let them uh, cool completely before you dip them. So the sugar is hot, but the, the dip, the sugar dip is cold. So what we're gonna do is grab our donut and again let let the let the knife do the work. You're gonna just go around and round and round on your yeast ring and cut your donut open. You could do this with two donuts if you wanted to. That might be a little extra extra, but it's really easy to cut the donut. So that I'm gonna set aside because Sally's got my nice hot dip. You need to warm the dip. It is available through Cisco. So you can get it, you can just pick it up. So here we go, There's the, this is chocolate dip. And what I'm do, what I'm gonna do actually is make this a chocolate caramel extravaganza. So I'm gonna take my yeast ring that's already been baked. I'm going to, in a squeeze bottle, I'm gonna inject the end and I'm gonna put, it just easily goes through and I'm gonna squeeze. So I'm gonna stuff my donut with caramel. Oh. That looks so good. And we're going to take our dip, which we've heated just a little bit. I'm going to put it in. There's a little bit of a trick to this. Shaky, shaky, and turn it around. There we go. That's it. A dipped donut. Just make sure. Okay. Done. You know, grown up professionals are going to, you just gave away the secret, the magic trick. I gave away this, but, but I want everybody to know the magic trick. So this is, uh, this is a, a donut glaze that you can buy. You could also make your own. Think of a chocolate ganache. So everybody has an awesome chocolate ganache recipe, I'm sure. Mm. So something you can easily do in, in house, right? Um, you can also make flavored dips with, uh, go shaky, shaky, and turn it around. There we go. And before this gets too coated and stuff, I'm going to put my toppings. So I'm going to got I've got some caramel popcorn, and this is sort of like a circus meets like chocolate and caramel all over the place. I've got some toffee, so some crunchy toffee. So instead of sprinkles, I'm going to kind of coat it in toffee, and then yep. we've got 
some pieces of chocolate here, some nice dark chocolate, which I'll you could use like shards of it or there we go, it's just snapping a little bit. So yummy, yummy, caramel stuffed, chocolate glazed, oops, toffee, uh, chocolate donut. You know what's interesting, Chef, is I did read an article recently that people should consider some food that are fun right now in this time. Consider right? that are rich. Like fun. Like that gives me a fun, very positive, fun experience if I went into a restaurant and had a, a donut or and it came like that over the top and beautiful. Well, like it just gives us something to look forward to. And Yeah. Uh, well, life is too short, Jay. Like I think that's what all of us have learned from just one, yes. you know, one thing we've learned is to, to take advantage of every day, enjoy yeah. life. Oops. So I've got some bacon here. I'm just assembling my breakfast sandwich. So I've got some bacon. I've got hash brown. I've got a yummy sunny side up egg. And of course, I have some maple syrup, which I'm going to put on my donut. So it's all of the breakfast things, sweet and savory together so that to is to go to go to go so you could wrap it up if you were if you were going to serve it uh maybe not eat it with a knife and fork but you could make a maple glaze or make a maple sauce there's like a maple spread you could also put inside there that makes it a little bit more portable and of course mm. you could cook your your yolk like over hard so that it doesn't run when you're trying to eat it in the car but um you know something super yummy and easy to do with the donut and then I'm going to show you this in a school box too. Um, of putting our donuts, you can make these ahead. You, you saw that it, how easy it was to dip the donuts. And one thing I was just telling you before we were juggling too many things was that you can actually make fruit dip, fruit flavored glazes. So if you take um, icing sugar, it's about three parts icing sugar to one part fruit, fruit puree. I can't say that today. Mm -hmm. The fruit puree could be jam. So any flavor jam you can get out of a bucket from Cisco. It can also be pie filling that isn't too chunky. So if it was a blueberry pie filling that even you blitzed it up a little bit so it was um, a little bit, but the particulate wasn't too large, you could easily do that. And with just a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of water or you could add another flavoring like rose water um, and or vanilla or things like that to it, peppermint, um, there's so many ways to make all of these flavors come to life. So I just want to show you and tell you that, um, mm. you know, there's things that you maybe you already have in your kitchen or you could easily get from Cisco already prepared. And then it's that semi homemade, right? It's taking something you have or little bits of it and then turning it into something signature and mm. unique and flavorful that um, guests are going to come back again and again um, to eat. So yeah, that's hopefully awesome. that's opened your eyes, Jay, and all our friends who are watching with us to just how versatile donuts are. Um, and if you need any suggestions, serving suggestions, how to use, um, like I said, we're preparing a, um, a cheat sheet for you um, of all those ratios and recipes that I kind of talked about and um, some fun ideas. And then just reach out. We're happy to help and support you um, creating a fun, uh, unique and amazing donut program. Awesome, Chef. Oh, that was a lot of great ideas, I tell you. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. Wicked ideas. Wicked ideas. You know, I I just think there's so much opportunity here. Like I said before, you know, when we look at restaurants right now and people are coming out, what a great ideas to have on your menu. Mm. Because you can change up. There's so many ideas and things you can do with donuts. But what a yeah. great way just to create a little bit of a fun experience either at the dinner after the dinner or even before, because we can always have donuts for appetizers. Uh, um, <laughs> right? uh, donuts with a dip after, um, and they're all done, all the hard work. What great <laughs> ideas, just so awesome to see. Think about like entertainment for your family. Like you could put together a kit of donuts and, mm -hmm. and finish at home. Yeah. So give them the glaze that you've made, right? You can give them the instructions and they could do that as a family. Um, or just in your group of friends, maybe in your bubble. Um, and yeah. um, it's just a, a fun and unique thing 
to uh, get people excited and again, get them just talking about your restaurant, what you're offering, yeah. that they keep coming back, right? Great social media stuff too, right? Donuts are so pretty and stuff like that. And so you can make, you know, the pinks, the yellows and all the beautiful colors that comes with donuts that you can top them with. And it really makes them Instagram worthy as we call it. Yeah. Um, great ideas, right? Awesome idea, chef. This Thank is you. our, this is our last five shows until we have you back later. Uh, whole thing. Well, you know, I'm here. So if there's any, anything that you need or anybody who's watching wants to reach out, uh, let us know we're here to help. We're here to make, you help you figure this out and make something amazing and creatable for your yeah. awesome chef always a blast um thanks again all the work you've done over these shows these five shows um <laughs> just been outstanding and, and just to think you know we the, the amazing ideas that come out of all these different things you do it just blows me blows me away and i've been doing this for quite a while i always get excited for uh, doing a show with you so thank you so much thank you Awesome. So for everyone else that watches our show, we're back this afternoon with Canada Beef. We're talking more about beef this afternoon. And then tomorrow, we got Luda back with more ideas and cost savings ideas that they're going to share with us on our show. That one's at 11 o'clock Eastern time. And then next week, we're back again. And then next week, it's our late night show at 7 p.m. Eastern time, as well as 3 p.m., 11 p.m. Jeez, I'm just all the time we're on shows uh but we're gonna have some fun and the grill dads from the food network will be on our first show kicking off our late night shows but anyways to everyone else all everyone else is in comments in we got some great feedback thank you so much um for sharing uh, with us your feedback and ideas as well um but thanks again chef always a blast can't wait to have you back hey, have fun getting on us everyone yes go and eat a restaurant Take care. Thank you.